Chapter 11, Bryce, the Serious Willis Realizing that my father had the same sense of humor as Garrett gave me the Serious Willis, I had the hardest time just looking at my dad, let alone speaking to him. But at about 5 o'clock Friday afternoon, I agreed with him about one thing. We should have barbecued. A barbecue is more, you know, low-key. Instead, my mom was flying around the kitchen, slicing and dicing and barking orders at dad and me like the president was coming to dinner. We swept the floor, put an extra leaf in the table, brought in five more chairs, and set the table. We set it all wrong, of course, but all my mother had to do was shuffle things around to make it right. It looked like the same to me, but what do I know? She put out candlesticks and said, Rick, can you load the dishes and run them? I'd like a chance to get cleaned up. After that, you can change. And Bryce, what are you wearing? Mom, it's the bakers. Are you trying to make them feel totally worthless? Trina and I agreed. I agreed. Trina and I, Trina and I agreed on the dress up, so, but why? My dad put a hand on my shoulder and said, so we can all feel equally uncomfortable some. Women, I looked at her and said, Does that mean I have to wear a tie? No, but some sort of button, some sort of button down instead of a t-shirt would be nice. I went down to my room and ripped through my closet looking for something with buttons. There were lots of buttons. All right, lots of geeky buttons. I thought about boycotting my mother's dress code requirements, but instead I started putting on shirts. 20 minutes later, I, was, I still wasn't dressed and I was extremely ticked off about it because what did it matter? Why did I care what I looked like at this stupid dinner? I was acting like a girl. Then through a gap in my curtains, I saw them coming. Out their front door, down their walkway, across the street. It was like a weird dream. They seemed to be floating, floating toward our house, all five of them. I pulled the shirt off my bed, punched my arms in, and buttoned up. Two seconds later, the doorbell rang and mom called. Can you get that price? Luckily, granddad beat me to it. He greeted them all like they were long lost family and even seemed to know which one was my, which one was Matt and which one was Mike. One was wearing a purple shirt and the other was wearing a green one. So it shouldn't have been that hard to remember which was which. But they came in and pinched my cheeks and said, Hey, baby brother, how's it going? And I got so mad I mixed them up again. My mother zoomed in from the ch kitchen saying, Come in, come in, it's so nice you all could make it. She called, Lunetta, Rick, we've got company. But then stopped short when she saw Julie and Mrs. Baker. Well, what's this? She asked. Homemade pies? Mrs. Baker said. Blackberry cheesecake and pecan. They look wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. My mother was acting so hyper I couldn't believe it. She took Julie's pie, then whooshed the path to the kitchen with, with Mrs. Baker. Netta appeared from ground the corner, which made Matt and Mike grin and say, Hey, Lynn, looking good. Black skirt, black nails, black eyes, for a nocturnal rod rodent. Yeah, I suppose she was looking good. They disappeared, they disappeared down to Lunetta's room. And when I turned around, my granddad was taking Mr. Baker into the front room, which left me in the entry hall with Julie alone. She wasn't looking at me. She seemed to be looking at everything but me. And I felt like an idiot, standing there in my geeky button-down shirt with pinched cheeks and nothing to say. And I got so nervous about having nothing to say that my heart start, started going wacko on me. Hammering, hammering like it does right before a race or a game or something. On top of that, she looked more like that stupid picture in the paper than the picture did. Picture did. If that makes any sense. Not because she was all dressed up. She wasn't. She was wearing some normal looking dress and normal looking shoes. And her hair was the way it always, always is, except maybe a little more brushed out. It was the way she was looking at everything but me, with her shoulders back and her chin out and her eyes flashing. We probably only stood there for 5 seconds, 
but it felt like a year. Finally, I said, hi, Julie. Her eyes flashed at me, and that's when it sank in. She was mad. She whispered, I heard you and Gera making fun of my uncle in their library, and I don't want to speak to you. You understand me? Not now, not ever. My mind was racing. Where had she been? I hadn't seen her anywhere near me in the library. And has she heard it? Or has she heard it from somebody else? I tried to tell her it wasn't me, it, that it was Gary, old Gary. But she shut me down. But she shut me down and made tracks for the front room to be with her dad. So I'm standing there, wishing I punched Garrett out in the library so Julie wouldn't stick me in the same class as someone who makes retarded jokes. When my dad shows up and claps me on the shoulder. So how's the party, son? Speak of the devil. I wanted to whack his hand off my shoulder. He leans out so he can see into the front room and says, Hey, the dad, the dad cleans up pretty good, doesn't he? I shrug away from him. Mr. Baker's name is Robert, dad. Yeah, you know, I knew that. He rubs his hand together and, said, and says, I guess I ought to go in and say hello, come in. Nah, mom probably needs my help. I didn't run off to the kitchen, though. I stood there and watched, watched Mr. Baker shake my father's hand. And as they stood there pumping and smiling, this weird feeling started coming over me again. Not about Julie, about my father. Standing next to Mr. Baker, he looked small, physically small. And compared to the cut of Mr. Baker's jaw, my dad's face looked kind of wizzly. This is not the way you want to feel about your father. When I was little, I'd always thought that my dad was right about everything and that there wasn't a man on earth he couldn't take. But standing there looking at him, I realized that Mr. Baker could squash him like a bug. Worse, still, was the way he was acting. Watching my dad chum it up with Julie's dad, it was like seeing him lie. To Mr. Baker, to Julie, to my grandfather, to everybody. Why was he being such a worm? Why couldn't he just act normal, you know, civil? Why did he have to put on such a phony show? This went, this went way beyond keeping the peace with my mother. This was disgusting. And people said I was the spitting, Im spitting, image, spitting image of my father. How often had I heard that one? I'd never thought about it much, but not it was turning my stomach. Mom jingled the dinner bell and called. How's the breath already? And then saw me still standing in the hallway. Bryce, where'd your sister and the boys go? I shrugged. Down to a room, I think. Go tell them, would you? And then come have some horse devourers. Sure, I said, anything to get rid of the taste in my mouth. Luneta's door was closed, and normally I would have knocked and knocked and called. Mom wants you, or dinner, or something. But in that split, split second before my knuckles hit wood, my hand became po possessed by evil baby brother. I turned the knob and walked right in. Does Meta freak out or throw stuff at me and scream for me to get up? No, she ignores me. Matt and Mike give me a nod and Meta sees me. But she's got her hands over some headphones and her whole body is bobbing up and down as she listens to a portable CD player. Matt or Mike whispers, It's about over. We'll be right there. Like of course I was there to say it was time to eat. What else would I be doing there? Something about that made feel, I don't know, left out. I wasn't even a person to those guys. I was just baby brother. Nothing new there. But now it really bugged me. Like all of a sudden, I didn't fit, fit in anywhere. Not at school, not at home. And every time I turned around, another person I'd known forever felt like a stranger to me. Even I felt like a stranger to me. Standing around eating little round crackers smeared with whipped Whipped cheese and fish eggs didn't do much for my mood either. My mother was acting like an entire swarm of busy bees. She was everywhere, in the kitchen, out of the kitchen, serving drinks, handing out napkins, explaining the food, but not eating a thing. Neta didn't buy mom's explanation on the horse devourers. She wound up dissecting hers, categorizing the parts into gross, disgusting, and revolting. Hanging near her didn't stop the baker boys from shoving crackers in holes, though. 
Man, I was just waiting for them to wrap, wrap themselves around the table leg and flex.